about uh, what to do with our feelings. Everybody have their little handouts there. Feelings of fear. Let's see the hands in here that uh, have experienced fear. Let's see, besides me. <laughs> All right, how many experience in fear right now on a regular basis? Let's see. Every day it seems like you're fear, fearful. For no reason at all, you, you feel fear. Now, be honest. Okay, everybody, that's, that's really good. How about, how about guilt? Anybody on the guilt? Okay. How about shame? All right, guilt. Shame? All right, shame. How about low self-esteem? I thought, I thought Mary was praising the Lord over here. Huh? Hey, I had my hand up at the wrong place. Oh, at the wrong. The, the, the fear. The fear. 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 All right. I was, I was, I was traumatized with fear for a long time, and I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it was right. fear mm -hmm. that, until until it came to the point where I had to recognize that it right. was fear, and I started praying against it. Good. So God is working. Is moving it out little by little. Yes. That's good. Uh, we need to recognize, it, it, you know, how many understands cause and effect? Cause and effect. Raise your hand. Cause and effect. All right. For every cause, there is what? An effect, good or bad. So if you're experiencing fear or shame or guilt, what is the cause? Uh, you might have a misunderstanding of the Word of God. You may have a misunderstanding about God, that he might be somebody up there with a baseball bat, and the minute you're ready, make it, the minute you make a mistake, he's going to wham you. How many of you have ever had that picture of God at one time in your life? All right, look at that, yeah. But that's not God. That's not the God of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs> that could be a God, all right, but it's not the God that created all things, and God, so we want to go into this tonight, but first, I want us to satch our minds a little bit with uh, what faith is. This is the Amplified. Now, faith is the substance. We can't see everything. How many can see love? What is love? You can't see it, but you can see the manifestation of it. Okay, when somebody does something good, you can say, well, they must love me. So you don't see love, but love is a powerful substance. Okay, now we're going to the spirit thing here now. I want you to look at me. Everybody say substance. What is substance? Something you, let's say you can't see, but, it, but faith is a substance. And it's powerful. Love is a substance, but it's powerful. How do you know you love your children? Well, first you feel it, don't you? you? You feel it. You feel it. You feel that love for them. How many has ever felt something else towards your children besides love? <laughs> Welcome to the real world. You know, that's, you know, at times they can vex your soul to no end. So we understand that. But understanding your feelings, why do we feel or why do you feel the way you feel? Why do you see things the way you see things? See, so this is what we want to touch tonight. So look at it. Now, faith is the substance, the confirmation. I love this, the title deed. Let's say that you went down and bought the car. <clears throat> Let's just say you won a car, but you didn't see it, but they brought you the deed. That's like faith. Okay, you got the deed, but you didn't see it. You didn't see the car. But they said, the car is yours, and you got the deed. Am I coming through? All right, you got the deed. So somewhere down the line, that car is going to show up, and somebody's going to drive it in the front yard. And that's when you'll go, abba dabba do, a dooby dabba dab. <laughs> You're going to rejoice. Now you have. The thing that was substance to start with, it was faith, but now you have the real thing, so you don't need faith anymore to believe for that car. You got the car, okay? So we, 
We live by faith. We walk by faith. We're saved by grace through faith. Everything in the Scriptures from beginning to end, Romans uh, chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, from beginning to end, it's by faith. Now, let's move on. I've got to move. I've got a lot to cover here tonight. Uh, the deed of the things we hope for, for being uh, hope for being the proof of things we do not see. So faith is the proof that you have, let's say, a resurrected body, but you don't see the resurrected body, but you have faith that you're going to get the resurrected body. Okay, you got the deed that you're going to get the resurrected body. And one day you're going to slip into it, and you'll, you'll have it. And then you don't need faith no more. You got, you got it. All right. <clears throat> The proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. We all have senses. How many senses do we have? Five? What are they? Smell, eyes, hear, whatever, you know what they are. Five senses. But our spirit man has senses. Okay? Faith is something that it, it's invisible, but you know you got it. Trust, believe, faith, you can mix it together. You believe you got it, you haven't seen it, you have faith that you're going to get it. It's a substance, you can't see it. But now how does faith come? Someone says, well, I need more faith. To start with, God gives us, he gives every man and woman a measure of faith, Romans uh, chapter 12, verse 3. We have a measure of faith that he gives us, but we can get more faith. How? Faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the Word of God. This is why it's so important to read the Word of God, because faith can come. That substance that, that really strengthens you, faith is powerful. The power of faith is very strong. <coughs> Put the King James up on that same Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Do you have your car? No, but I have the evidence. What is the evidence? Faith, my faith. You mean you believe you're going to get a car? Yeah, I believe it. But you don't see it. No, I don't see it, but I, I have the substance. I have faith. I believe it. And, and it's so strong. It's so strong. Faith is so strong. You just know you have it. There's no doubt. You don't even worry about it. I got it. It's mine. Jar. All right. Now, here. <clears throat> I want you to turn to, um, I want to turn to, uh, this, let's go to the second verse. All right, second verse, and we're going to move real quick. Amplified, chapter 11, verse 2. <coughs> For by faith, trust, and holy fervor, born of faith, the men of God had divine testimony, born to them, and attained a good report. Next verse, talking about the hall of fame, the heroes in Hebrews 11. By faith, we understand that the worlds, notice worlds, during the su successful ages were framed, fashioned, put in order, and equipped for their intended purpose by the Word of God. That's how powerful the Word of God, we believe that by faith. I've never seen God, but I believe God exists. I know that God exists. There's no doubt in my mind. If somebody put a gun in my, up to my brain, and said, so I'm going to shoot you. If you say you believe in God, I believe in God. Boom. I'm in heaven. That quick. That's why you don't have to fear death. <coughs> now, put in order and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God so that what we see was not made out of things which are visible. So what we see here was made out of what? things which are visible by the Word of God, so that what we see was not made out of the things which are visible or what we see. 
So there's nothing. And God says, something. Whoop, there it is. There's no mountain there. God says, the word of God. He speaks. Mountain. Whoop, there's the mountain. Y'all out there, aren't you? <laughs> I want to hear a grunt or something. <laughs> a little hallelujah. How great our God is. All right. <sighs> now, verse 17. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm on the wrong page. Uh, four. Look at four. Prompted, activated by faith. Abel brought God a better and more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, because of which he, it was testified of him that he was righteous, that he was upright and right standing with God, and God bore witness by accepting and acknowledging his gifts. And though he died, yet though the incident, uh, through the incident, he is still speaking. Now, I'm not going, it's a lot I could talk about all that, but I'm moving to somewhere now. Next verse. Now, because of faith, Enoch was caught up and transferred to God, uh, transferred to heaven, so that he did not have a glimpse of death, and it was not found, or he was not found, because God had translated him, for even before he was taken to heaven, he received testimony still in, on record. Now, notice this that he had pleased and been satisfactory to God through his good conduct. That's right. Through what? Faith. Faith. You know, we all want to do good. We all want to have good conduct. I know some people, they're in bondage. Some people, you wonder, well, why do they do what they do? And many times it's because they're in bondage. They need help. We understand that? Okay. Sometimes we feel guilt. We feel ashamed. We feel put down because we feel that we're not pleasing God because of well, we're not as productive as we should be for God's kingdom. But it says, by faith we please God. Put the King James up there on that verse of Scripture. I want to show you something. But without faith it is impossible to please Him. But without good works it is impossible to please Him. All right, everybody shake their head. Okay, don't make sure you shake it right. Don't shake it like this. I'm, 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 trying, to, I'm trying to get you to set free. Because sometimes we miss the mark. Sin is nothing but missing the mark. Did you know that? That's what sin is. Missing the mark. But God has made preparations. If you do miss the mark, what's the scripture? Somebody help me. What did I didn't hear? It. All right. I want my students to know it. You missed the mark. God's made provisions. Say God's made provisions. Okay. Is there anyone in here really wants to sin? Raise your hand. Good. But if you do, God's made provision. And then we keep on going on. Now, but listen, what pleases God? Everybody say faith. Right there. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. You know, now, how many, all of us, well, I'm not, I'm not doing what I should do. I, I should do better. Uh, I, I need to do that. I, 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 what, 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 what,
I didn't say that pleased God. What pleases God? Faith. Now, I'm going somewhere with this thing to help you. Now, let's ask ourselves a question. Are we pleasing God? I ain't talking about your conduct. I mean, I, I feel that most all of your uh, conduct is, is excellent. There might be one or two in here, uh, yeah. <laughs> including the pastor. <laughs> but, but that is not the question. Are we pleasing God? If we are, how are we pleasing him? By what? Everybody say faith. Yeah, be bold, be courageous, be strong. Faith, 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 faith. How do you get faith? God gives us all a measure of faith. Romans 12, 3. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what are we concerned with? We're concerned mostly about, well, you know this and I, you know that. I mean, uh, wait a minute. What pleases God? Okay. Over here, I'm not talking to you guys no more. What pleases God? Right. Let's check this side out again. I'll give you another chance. What pleases God? Right. Now you guys have got it. Now look at what it says. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If we are seeking God and he doesn't reward us, God help me not to get into trouble. God knows my heart. But God would be a liar. Think it through. God is not a man that he should lie. So faith and that he is a rewarder, or one must believe that he is, and that we must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And I can testify tonight that that's true. You know, we, I've, I've got a message, I preached it one time about <clears throat> the witnesses, all the witnesses that seen Jesus in his resurrected body. There was hundreds of them, okay? Hundreds of them. God testified about his son. This is my beloved son in who I am well pleased. Frank said a prayer tonight that really, man, it sparked something in my spirit. We, today, you and me, can testify that God is true. We look at Israel over there. You go back into the book of, 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 uh, of uh, Ezekiel, Ezekiel 37. How many ever read Ezekiel 37 about the dry bones? Let's see your hands real quick. Okay, I might have to preach on that again. Can these dry bones live? Well, we are living in the generation where we've seen those dry bones live and come back and be joined together as a nation. Think about it. You can testify that the Word of God is true. You have seen this nation. Some of you, Willie, uh, Frank, and uh, how many has been to Israel? One, two, three. Four people in here can testify that they're over there. How many have seen them on TV? Right before our very eyes, we've seen a nation come into being that was prophesied hundreds of years ago that it would come into being and become a strong nation, a nation that was scattered, was scattered all over the world. They kept their language, they kept their religion, and God brought them back to their homeland, and we are witness to that. We should strengthen what? Our right. Why, another witness. God saved a wretch like you. And me. Wow. You're talking about the power of God. 
to save a wretch like you all, <laughs> and especially me all. <laughs> wow. Man, hard day to calm down. You might get excited. All right, now what I want you to see is we get all hung up and, and, and the devil just accuses us and makes us feel bad and all of that. Over, well, we're not doing what we should do, and this and that, and all that, and all that is he's accusing you. How many is doing the best they can? Let me see your hands. Doing the best you can right now. How many is not doing the best you can? Okay, you start doing be better then. <laughs> Lord, help my brother do better. <laughs> Give me five. <laughs> help him, Lord, do better, do better. But listen, no, don't do better. Just surrender. I surrender all. See, that's the really, that's it, isn't it. I've been trying so hard to please God. I work at it 24 7. Shut up. You don't please God that way. You please God by. You please God by. Ah, you getting it. I know you get it tonight. Wow, man, by faith. Woo! Glory to God. Doesn't say anything about Enoch in here being perfect. But I tell you what, when you've been born again, as God works in you, notice this, God working in us Seems like I've read that somewhere, Mary. Working in us. God working in us, making us willing to do His good will. How many of us in here have strained over the years, oh God, I want to do your will. Stop it. Lord, work in me. Everybody say, God, work in me. Because you will work yourself to death and won't get nowhere until God changes the inside of your cup and you'll say, it was God. It was God. It was God. Do you know why you're born again? God. He chose you before the foundation of the world to be his. While you were yet a sinner, doing your thing, he died for you. He started it, and that's what the Bible says. Jesus Christ, who is what? The beginning and the ending of our faith. He started it, and he's going to finish it. And our faith now, our faith is not in our working of trying to accomplish anything, but just to please Him as we put our faith in Him to do the work in us that we might be able to be vessels fit for the Master's use and the power of God, boom, goes through us one day and the whole congregation is delivered and comes into a freedom that they've never known before. All right, let's get uh, on our little thing here now. Everybody got their little hand out? Before I begin, I want to make it clear that I am only seeking, speaking of the stronghold behavior aspect of fear, guilt. There are spirits of guilt, fear, and worthlessness. Now, that's one thing the devil will try to get you to feel. Now, we're talking about feelings. We should feel good all the time, but then there's times when the devil comes against us and we feel inferiority complex, we feel guilty, we feel ashamed, and you stop and you say, well, what have I done? Well, sometimes it's not what you've done, it's what you haven't done. But maybe it's just none of those two things. It's just the enemy accusing you and you can never get delivered. 
until you stop, like Mary said, started coming up against that, recognizing it, and doing spiritual warfare against that spirit of fear. For God's not given us a spirit of fear, but what? Power, love, and a sound mind. So she knows that that fear is not coming from God. She don't need to have that fear. Now, there's good types of fear. If we're on top of the mountain and, and, and there's a 200,000-foot drop, you know, and um, Yolanda's not going to stand on the, on the edge of that thing and look like, wow, look at that, man, look at down there. That's a long way down there, man. Man, we'd all be trying to grab her, bring her back, you know. No, we'd be, we'd be way back. I'd be way back here because the older you get, I remember the last tree I climbed. I'm up on that tree, and I'm holding that tree like a bear. I said, why did I climb up here? Ooh, ooh. Man, but I finally got down. I said, no more. I remember the last time Frank and me was on top of this building. When we did get off of it, that's it. We ain't never getting on that building no more. Right, Frank? Yeah, remember that? Man, I mean, we were sliding. That, it's, that's a steep roof. All right. <laughs> what are you feeling tonight? What type of feeling is depressing you? What type of feeling is making you feel unworthy? What type of feeling? What do we do with these feelings? How many of you know these people are getting these feelings and they get a gun and they go into Walmart and they huh? How many of you understand that it's got to get in the brain and your emotions and they carry that thing out? And you ask them, why did you do it? And many times they don't know because the Satan, the enemy, the God of this world has, has moved them to do it. So you don't say, I don't. Let my feelings control me. All right. All of us have gotten up in the morning wanting to go back to bed. How many's been there? Right. Wanted to carry the bed to work with you. But they don't allow that anymore. Got to leave the bed at home. You can be the you can be you you can be perfect if that's possible. I mean, in your actions, you are perfect as far as God's concerned. And you feel bad. You feel that you are bad. Is that not true? So your feelings, you cannot trust your feelings. Sometimes feelings will tell you things. It could be true. It could be true. But a lot of feelings come from the enemy. This is what we call the fiery darts of the enemy. Okay? All right, let's move on real quick. Like. There are spirits of guilt, fear, worthlessness that can also be a factor and must be addressed and driven out. However, if all we do is address the spirits but leave the stronghold in place. Now, what is a stronghold? All right, let's just put it down to simplicity. If you have a stronghold, or if I have a stronghold in my mind that nobody in this assembly loves you, how are you going to act and react towards everybody? Come on, somebody come up here and talk to me. How are you going to react if you feel your wife is against you? How many of wives I've had and husbands over the years in my office I feel that he don't love me. How many has ever felt that? Hmm? Be honest. It don't hurt to be honest. Sure, we're all human beings. See how I'm sweating up here? You know why I'm sweating? I'm a human being. Y'all going to love me because I'm a human being? Yeah, we're all human beings. Anybody ever got mad in here besides me? Look at the people raising their hand. How many ever gotten angry? Does the Bible allow us to be angry? Yes. Be angry, but what? Don't throw the frying pan. So what I want you to do is understand that you're a human being, yes, and you might not do everything right all the time. 
but are you pleasing God by your faith? Woo! Now, I know I've turned this thing all 180 degrees on us tonight. We're all caught up with, I don't know if I'm doing this right, or I, I don't know that. I, I, what about the, what about, wait a minute. That, that, how do you please God? I, 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 some of you didn't uh, clear your throat. It's a, uh, say, faith. 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 Are you back there? Faith. You please God by faith. How many have ever thought that in their mind? None of you. Unless God showed it to you. Oh, I know I'm pleasing God. I mean, I'm this and I'm that and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. That's good. Don't stop it. It may be, it's good. Th th those things are good. But how do you please God? By faith. Suppose you did all those things and you didn't do it by faith. Are you pleasing God? Good question. You might be pleasing your husband, pleasing your wife. But are you pleasing God? I like, I, I ask people questions. Are you a Christian? My mother was. That's good. How about your grandma? Oh, your grandma was a good one. Are you a Christian? My grandfather was. That ain't what I asked you. Are you a Christian? Well, I try to be. Are you married? Yes. Are you married? Well, I try to be married. What are you talking about try to be married? You're either married or you ain't married. Isn't that right, Mary? Isn't that right? Yeah. No, say I'm a Christian. Okay. What made you a Christian? You put your what? Faith in what Christ did at the cross. That pleased God. When you pray, you believe that God's going to answer your prayer because by faith you believe God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. And sometimes we have to turn the whole thing around the whole other way and start all brand new again. Anybody here today, please God, after this message, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> but God's going to show us that, that. Let's bring this thing down where we live. Who can I pick on? Who can I pick on? <laughs> I'll pick on myself. I'll pick on myself. How, how would I feel? And Susan says, honey, would you take out the trash? And I say, yes, I'll take out the trash. Honey, would you take out the trash? Uh, yeah, honey, I would take out the trash. Would you take out the trash? Honey, I said I'd take out the trash. What is she showing? She's showing she ain't got no faith in me that I'm going to take the trash out because she keeps asking me. How many has done that with God? Huh? Come on, come on, huh? Come on. Yeah, I, got every, I got us all on that one. So after a while, we don't pray no more. We just beg. And we, we way off course. We way off course. We're not even in faith. How can you please God without faith? We over here in the left field. Oh, God, please, please. Did not my word say, does not my word say that I watch over my word to perform it? Have I not proven myself to you in many situations? Have not I showed you that you can trust me? So, God, I thank you. I know I please you by faith, and I have faith that I have asked this, and I believe it's going to happen, and I trust you with it. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, I, I think that makes him feel pretty, pretty good. 
So what happens? Get back to Susan and me. Are you going to take the trash out? I said I was going to take the trash out, didn't I? Now we've got a big, huh? The whole house is trembling. What's going on over there at the Tiltons? <laughs> and I'm heading to get the trash out. She said, you going to take the trash out? Ooh, I'm feeling what? I'm feeling all kind of what? Come on, is that not true? You know, when you just watch people and love people and you get free yourself, you, you can see so much. Susan, uh, Tammy, uh, and, and, and Steve and the kids, I had two kids, and they got these, what do you call these things on the water, motorbikes, water bikes or whatever, you know. So they go way up in this channel, <coughs> but the tide goes out, and, and it's just a little bit of water in there. And, and, and they're pushing these things. She's, got, she's back here with this one pushing, and, and, and Steve's pushing. And she's saying, push, Steve, push. Push, Steve, push. Shut up, woman, shut up. <laughs> I say, I love it, I love it, I love it. Boy, they're getting down to good marriage life. Boy, they right in the mix of it now. I tell you, they're going to grow now for sure. <clears throat> All right. I said I'd take the trash out. All right, let's move on. We're talking about feelings, and all feelings are not bad, but what's the cause of it? What is the cause of us feeling bad? What is the cause of us not loving ourselves? What is the cause of us not loving other people? What is the cause that I feel this way around so-and-so? How many has ever, ever done that? You felt sort of strange around certain people, you know? All right, let's move on. Feelings are, are not necessary, necessarily speak. Feelings do not necessarily speak truth. If you feel guilty, it does not mean that you are guilty. Many times, feelings merely tell us what is going on in our thought life or what we are really believing. Now, how many of you know you got to think it and then it goes into a what? Attitude and, a, and emotions. The emotions you feel it in your emotions. Now, I'm going to put a question to everyone. Everybody look at me. If you think that I don't love you, and this is 24-7 going around in your mind, and you see me every Sunday, how many of you know you're going to feel different about me? Hello? It's simple. It's not complicated. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is the man. Now, here's the thing about it. Everybody loves Pastor Bob. But I do one thing. I say no. Oh, my goodness. Pastor Bob said no. What? He what? Yeah, he said no. He what? Yeah, he said no. Everybody, oh. Now, you start thinking. Now you start feeling ill. Pastor Bob said we couldn't do this. Now everybody, then I come in church one day. Hey, everybody, how's everybody? Hello? Of course, I sense the spirits, you know. Oh, hi, ya, hi, 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 hi. See, it's a real spiritual battle. See, people don't understand. It's a real spiritual battle. And, brother, when you're in leadership, you better have a lot of grace. Because you're going to have to just love people even when they make mistakes. Sometimes I come in and, and everybody's doing a great job in this church, you know. But there are those at times that all of us have done it, leave the light on in the church. You know, they clean the church. It's wonderful. They go home. I look, at, look over here at 10 o'clock at night. The lights are on. Well, I'm just, I'm an overseer, so I come over and I cut the lights out. Now, how many of you know who cleaned the building, Susan? Uh, 
I think it was Rick and Missy. Ooh. Now, let me see if they're honest. Have y'all ever left the lights on? Everybody look back there. Everybody, got, so you don't feel too bad yourself. Okay. So, uh, so you got, you got to have grace because, see, what happened was uh, Susan left the lights on back in the nursery. And I usually don't say nothing, but this time I said, well, honey, you left the lights on. Oh, okay. So she go back, she cuts the light off. So we go out. I lock the door, and the light is on in the sanctuary. <laughs> and she is so gracious. She doesn't say, say a thing. Because she don't have to say a thing. I can see. <laughs> Who was the last one out of the building, Susan? I got it. So I come back in, I cut the light off. Hello? Aren't you glad for God's grace? But I didn't mean that. I didn't mean to do that. That doesn't mean I'm an awful. But you've got to have a little, give some people a little room to be human. Oh, no. Hang them. Put poison in their soup. Don't give them a chance. But how about when it comes to your time, huh? When you make your mistake, huh? Huh? What are you hollering for? Holl grace, grace, grace. Folks, let me tell you something. If you haven't learned this yet, we are saved by grace, grace, grace through faith. That God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him, and He rewards us with eternal life. Folks, you're going to feel, but get a handle on your feelings. Now, let's move on. You can take this home and read it, and I really encourage you to do this. All right. Feelings do not necessarily speak truth. If you feel guilty, it does not mean that you are guilty. Many times, feelings merely tell us what is going on in our thought life or what we are really believing. If we think we are guilty, there will be a feeling of guilt. Isn't that something? We actually produce the negative feelings in our own lives by how? We think. You've got to think it first before you feel it. It's got to hit this brain. So in a way, we are, our, by obeying the Word of God, by casting those imaginations down, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, which is the Word of God, that's our job, and bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. That's our job. And if you don't, then you develop all of these strongholds, which are wrong, they're not God's thinking because the devil is constantly putting imaginations in your mind. Constantly. Remember, he'll steal the Word of God from you. All right, let's move on here now. Feelings are uh, uh, meant to hel help alert us to something that is wrong. Feelings should not be ignored, all right? But why are you feeling the way you are feeling? I have felt so negative in my lifetime at times. And I, and I talk to myself. You're not, how many talk to themselves? You, you need to start that. Ask yourself questions. Bob, yes. Why do you feel the way you feel? I don't know. All right, let's analyze it. You got money in the bank? Yeah, I got some money in the bank. Susan have any money in her pocketbook? I don't know. I hadn't checked lately. Are you full of food, that is? Yes. Is the car paid for? Yes. The light's on? Yes. I mean, just go all the way down the line, and then you say, 
Why should I be gloomy? I should be praising God for meeting all my needs. And what happens? You get your mind on what the Lord has done. You start praising God, and your feelings will get better. You'll start feeling great and wonderful. First thing I do in the morning when I wake up, I say, Good morning, Lord. Then I find my socks, put my socks on, get dressed. Susan gets up, puts some water on, makes the coffee. I do all my little things. She does her thing. We sit down and we start our day. But I don't feel like running around the block about five times. How many in here feel like doing that? Nobody in here? Missy? Yolanda? Do you? You do? How do you feel? How do you feel when you first wake up? Good. All right. Have you always felt good? <laughs> all, right, all right, we'll let you slide this time. No, you haven't always felt good. That's why I'm talking about, listen, I'm 80 years old. My span is 80 years when I talk to you. By my 80 years of experience, you guys are young, 30 years old, 26, uh, 14, 39. Brother, when you get my age, you start feeling things you've never felt before. <laughs> <laughs> What's that on the back of my neck? It's like a bump. What is this, Susan? It's a bump. <laughs> All right. So feelings aren't bad, but you can cause yourself to have good feelings by thinking right thoughts. And the Bible says, think on that which is bad, ugly, and stupid. Huh? I messed up on that one. Philippians 4, what? Think on that which is good, honest, noble, upright. Now, I want to ask you a question. Who's in charge of your mind? Satan or you? I don't get nothing out of nobody this morning. <laughs> you have to admit, there's times when Satan... It's got control over your mind. Is that not true? But what I'm trying to say is not to scold you because we all have to go through that. But do you recognize it? And what do you do? Because if you don't take authority at that moment, he can get you in a bad mood. I mean a bad, bad, bad mood. And do something ugly, bad. End up in jail. For 80 years, three meals a day, TV. Some people like that. I like my freedom. Don't you? All right, look what it says. When we begin to feel guilty, we need to instead get to the root of the problem and address it with God's Word. What does God's Word say about our guilt? It tells us that we, if we confess our sin and forsake it, we are forgiven and cleansed of whatever kind of unrighteousness that uh, we've committed. When we choose to believe that over how we feel, th that our feelings will begin to change because they are merely the fruit of our thoughts and beliefs. Woo, mercy. Anybody want to comment on that? Our feelings many times is nothing but what? The fruit of our thinking. It's the hardest thing for me as I minister to people. And this is the way it works. And I'm just being honest. Okay, just being honest. And, and I've been there and understand so the person comes in, and, and, and they're really down. In about 15 minutes, i got them built up, and they feel great. They're wonderful. They feel saved again. Hallelujah. Next week, they come back, and they're down again. So I do the same thing. I go through the Scriptures and show them that the problem. And, and of course, they got to come in and rehearse, tell me every detail. And, and detail. Well, I let that go for about two or three times. But at some point, you've got to stop. 
talking about the problem and start talking about the solution. But see, when the devil's got you gripped in your mind, the only thing you can see is that problem. It's a mountain in your life, and it's nothing. It's not too big for God, and it ain't too big for me, and it should not be too big for you. You can think yourself in the grave. Hello? This is why our identification with Christ is so important. Think on that which is good, honest, and noble. How many has been in the house all by themselves <clears throat> and they hear something crack in the house? And you go... Then you hear it again. Ooh. Now your imagination begins to go in operation. So you stumble out of the bed, you cut the light on, and you go and check every room under the beds, everywhere. And you come back, <sighs> you lay back down, just about go to sleep again, and that thing goes crack. You hear it again. And in your mind, you're thinking somebody is breaking in. So you get on the phone. Pastor Bob. <laughs> Call Rick, please. <laughs> yes. I think somebody's trying to break in my house. Be right over. And I can't even get in the house. I got the door locked, you know. I think, how can anybody break in this house? I can't. I'm the pastor. I can't even get in the house myself. What are they talking about? <laughs> <laughs> how many's been there? Huh? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, because your imagination, now your emotions are involved in this thing, and they're coming to get you. Huh? Who? Who's coming to get you? Them? Uh, uh, who's them? <laughs> I wonder who them is. I've had people say, you know, they don't like it. I said, who are they? Well, you know, they. They who? Find out who they is, and we might talk, but other than that, let's forget it. We'll just go like we're on. They, my dad used to laugh at that, them, they. Who, has anybody ever come to you and say they? Yeah, look at that, they. Who in the world is they? Who put they in charge? <laughs> so how many can identify with this? And we should have good feelings all day long. And it's up to you. But if there's a circumstance in your life that that bothers you, it will bother you 24-7 all the days of your life. You will never get victory until you put it down, shake it off, refuse to think on it anymore, and that's a discipline. Because the devil will drive it into your soul to where you will become a bitter, angry critter. Tell it like it is, Bob. Believe it will. I've seen some on recruiters before. Anybody seen any on recruiters? Yeah. Yeah, on the, uh, yeah, I've seen some on recruiters. This woman was crying on my shoulder. This was years ago. She's about 69 years old. We're trying to minister, trying to help her out. The kids don't love me. What do you mean they don't love you? They don't love me. They don't ever come and see me. And, uh, and I'm thinking, I wonder why. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> Because she was the type of person just, you know, just. Uh, excuse me, I, I got a phone call outside. <laughs> My wife's calling me, I think. <laughs> I said, Lord, please let me get out of this uh, room gracefully. <laughs> and I'm trying to get her to say, listen, you've got to change your stinking thinking. What do you mean? Well, I mean, every time they, your kids come to your house, you're, you're bad-mouthing them, finding fault with them. Don't sit on the couch. I just had it cleaned two years ago. Sit over here. <laughs> How many have ever been in a place like that? And you, you sit down and you... Can I sit here on the floor? <laughs> no, I just mopped it. Ooh. <laughs> See, I had an ant like that. 
I quit going in the house. Throw my hat in. The hat comes back out. I don't go. If it don't come out, I go in. If you want friends, show yourself to be friendly. Is that scripture? That's scripture. We bring a lot of problems on ourselves and on everybody else around us because we refuse to take charge of this little thing right up here which affects our attitudes and our emotions and our lifestyle and our conduct. And then we wonder why people don't want to be around us. When you start getting in public, you got to, I mean, you got to even check your breath. Can you imagine you coming up here and I got breath like, it smells like the stable. Oh, Susan, Susan, why don't anybody ever come up for prayer anymore? I don't understand it. What are you standing over there for? Come on, we want to talk to you. Come on. Simple little things like that, you can run your friends off. Always complaining, always murmuring, always finding fault. Contaminate the, even, even, the, even the paint on the wall is trying to get away. <laughs> cracking. You can see it cracking, trying to get away. We create an atmosphere in our own life first. We create an atmosphere in the building, and you can feel it. That's why when you come in here, I'm smiling. When you come in here, now my breath stinks, let me know, and I'll, I'll get some of that. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. When you come in here, I, I'm going to greet you. I expect you to greet me. We greet one another. Hello? Show yourself, show yourself to be friendly. Well, you people do that. You people do that. Well, I don't feel like I, should, I can love that brother. Well, you can't love God then. If you don't love him whom you see, your brother, you do not love God. That's why I tell people, forgive. Forgive. Keep that communication open. Not only in the natural communication, but there's a spiritual communication. Listen to me, church. I'm telling you something here. There's a communication in the spirit that has to flow. God is one that flows through his people. Imparting to one another what the other one has is moving into all of us. And without that, it's dead. So, we make sure that we're prayed up, forgiven up, and we be our best for God, and we can be. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Take this home and read it. Give us some studying. And um, the time has run out. Mary, would you like to, for us to pray for you on, on that fear? And others may want to go. Would you like to do that tonight? Spend a little time? All right, and...